I'm Andrew G, and this is Showtime. Bridget McKay is a playwright and a performing artist. Her recent plays include Love Chamberlain and Kindness. She's a multi-award winning playwright and performer, and today I'm catching up with Bridget to have a chat about her latest project, The Exact Dimensions of Hell, playing soon at Melbourne's 45 Downstairs. Hi, Bridget. Hello, how are you? I'm great. Um, the Exact Dimensions of Hell, that sounds super mysterious. Tell, tell us a bit about it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it is a play that I have written that is going to be on at 45 Downstairs opening next Friday. Um, it is a play about a young girl who wants to be a witch and she meets an older man who claims that he can teach her how. Uh, but really the play is about her desire and really looking at, um, at the desires of young women and treating them very seriously. Can you tell me a bit about the process? How do you go from, um, you know, using the exact dimensions of hell as an idea, how do you go from that first thought to a show that opens next week at 45 Downstairs? Well, um, this particular project has had a really interesting development. Um, I wrote a first draft of this script in 2016 that was um, performed at the Cybeck Electric readings at the Melbourne Theatre Company. Um, and that play, um, you know, it was a full draft of a completely different play about the same thing. Um, and then I sort of realised that that play was telling it, the story from the wrong perspective. So in 2018, um, I started working with the director, Alice Darling, who's directing this work and uh, rewriting and, um, and then COVID lockdowns happened, um, but I kept working on the play. Um, and I really wrote it in collaboration with a musician, um, Chris Gray and Meg, who's this, uh, our visual designer. So we were sharing images and sound and I was writing text. So there was a sort of back and forth process of generating a lot of material. Um, so it was, uh, I mean, I have written the script, but it's been written really collaboratively. And this um, collaboration, Bridget, was this during you know, one of the many long, dark COVID lockdowns and collaborating yeah. online and virtually in Zooms and all that stuff? It that was, we... yeah. Sure. Yeah, so it was, um, I guess, yes, I did fill my time by writing, by working on this script. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in terms of how do you get a script, it's just a lot of work. You just... <laughs> <laughs> keep writing and rewriting and we've had a couple of developments with actors which helps um, strengthen the that story but it sounds like um, in some ways this work has had that sort of therapeutic cathartic um, presence in your life as, as, a, as a focal point during those lockdowns yeah it has it was definitely um, yeah I think that the focus I was able to give it because of those lockdowns has and the sort of intensity of the research I was able to do has given the work a particular quality that it might not otherwise have. I mentioned in the intro some of the past works that you've done, some of the awards that you've won. Um, sounds like you're not the sort of person to uh, to, to sit idly because uh, you're also working on The Witness at the moment. Yeah, so that was part of um, the Engine Room Commissions, which is um, they say they don't program all the works, but they give money to create new work. Um, so I've been working with the director, Bridget Belotis, um, who was resident director at the Malt House a couple of years ago. Uh, she's, she's a really incredible director. That show is about, uh, I think all my works sort of focus around the idea of belief in some way, but this is a monologue um, sort of based on a true story of a friend of mine who grew up Jehovah's Witness. And then um, when he left home, he started working for a bikey gang. So it's wow. looking at those two worlds and... Um, yeah, it's really a portrait of this person. And when you do a work like that, do you do you tell them that they're? Um, oh yeah, I yeah. definitely um, got his permission, yeah. and it and it's based on him. But I have taken the story somewhere a bit more dramatic than yeah. than his life. Yeah. Have you written an autobiographical work? Um, I haven't written anything autobiographical. Um, oh, but you know. I think in, in there are probably the bits of you in all your um, work. I there are bits of me, yeah, and yeah. particularly the exact dimensions of how, like, we've said it in the '90s, the teenagers in the '90s. That was when I was a teenager. Um, so there's definitely elements of me and growing up in the suburbs at that time that have made their way into the work. 
sounds like some of these um some of these sort of workshopping engine room opportunities have been a really valuable part of your journey as as a writer and creative but but um i imagine it's also a fantastic opportunity uh for emerging creatives emerging artists that uh want to get that first shot at getting a work out there um yeah i think um definitely development is important and really incredible that those main stage companies have the have programs that support emerging writers and um pathways for for writers to get into the main stage it's it's really um valuable for someone watching this who is thinking about yeah this is what i want to do what's 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 the next step what was what was the turning point for you what was what was the point where you started to feel you know what people people are are connecting with 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 some of my works i'm starting to get opportunities uh to stage some of my pieces I think Melbourne's a really great place to make work. There's so many opportunities and especially, it was really doing stuff in Fringe, I think, just um, having the freedom to do whatever you want and have people come to that. And um, that's an opportunity to really see what your writing is like when you, I think that, yeah, my answer is just doing it and taking up those opportunities that are there. Like audiences are so generous at Fringe time and they really want to come and, support work and they're looking at the work that they're watching with a lot of um love yeah melbourne fringe and 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 the other comedy festival uh which is on right now it's an opportunity to sort of for audiences to almost accidentally stumble upon works that they're just going to see because it's part of uh fringe or comedy or or or, uh you know it's they're looking not necessarily knowing what they look for and and that's I think how a lot of people um, find an audience, build a following and, and, and get that support and start to get that uh, that momentum. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, um, yeah, it's a really good way for you to learn about your own work in front of an audience. How much of other people's work do you, uh, do you go out and see as part of your development process? Yeah, I try to see um, as much as possible. Um, and uh, there's so much on. It's hard to see everything, but I do try to see as much as I can. So the exact dimensions of hell, um, yeah. it starts on the 19th of April. Uh, there's a yeah. preview on the 18th, I believe, uh, and it's running for a fairly short season. It's running till the 28th of April at 45 downstairs in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, and you can get tickets at 45downstairs.com. Yeah, through their website, yeah. Bridget, thanks so much for joining me and uh, Chookers for, uh, for the exact dimensions of hell. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.